Etsy has two really large problems. I know you're going to say, Pam, it's got a whole lot more than just two problems, but I'm seeing two really massive problems and I wanted to talk about them. Is this the downfall of Etsy? So I was just watching YouTube as you do with my morning coffee and I started watching this video and I got so riled up, not at the creator, but at the truths <laughs> that I wanted to share it. I, I calmed myself down and came on. I wanted to share it with you. Um, I would ask that you all, I'm not going to cover this whole video because that's not for, fair. The creator is Electro Honey. She's a small creator. She seems absolutely adorable and um, really good content. So I don't want to share the whole thing. So you go over and watch her video, but I want to share the bits that I wanted to talk about. So let's get into this. Have you ever wanted to support a small business only to stumble upon numerous big corporation made items being sold for three times the price of their AliExpress counterpart, but still being labeled as handmade? This, I think everyone will agree, this is such a problem on Etsy. And this is a big problem because it is turning customers away. The thing is, if customers were absolutely loving Etsy, then we'd probably be a bit quiet about it. But the hate is a thing that is making it harder and harder for us all as sellers on Etsy. Well, chances are you were probably shopping on Etsy. Etsy, unlike other... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Their current problematic platforms actually started out with really great and genuine intentions. But in recent years, Etsy has turned against the very artist it wanted to give a platform to in the beginning. Yeah, I totally agree with this, that the nature of Etsy has changed. I've been on Etsy since 2008. That is a very long time. <laughs> and when I went on, it was a cool little small community. Now, I'm not going to hark back and say everything was great then. It really wasn't. Nobody who wasn't a small creator hadn't heard of it, had heard of Etsy. So you were only making sales from other sellers. To make sales, you had to be active on Etsy constantly, chatting in chat, which they had, which wasn't like chat that we have now. It was sort of like the forums, but you'd go in and live chat with a group of people and bought so many things and made so many sales through there. You had to relist constantly <laughs> of items to get seen. So it was an awesome, great feeling place, but it was not perfect. Their safety, their security, even their funds at times has become... Yeah, the um, holding back... Etsy reserves, that's the word I'm looking for, was a massive problem. Etsy has addressed this to an extent, but the thing is, of course, sellers aren't up to date on all the, it's not completely fixed anyway, but Etsy was doing a big, a big deal of withholding a whole chunk of people's money. There was a big issue with it and Etsy did step it back a little bit. Still not perfect, but it is improved. But buyers are only seeing these big, where we were all shouting about things and nobody clicks on the positive things. Nobody's talking about the positive things, so they don't see that it's better. So buyers are thinking that Etsy's not a good place to support handmade people, which is that here's, I'll, I'll do my rant on what the problems are right now. The two problems, um, I know it feels like more. The first problem is shareholders, 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 shareholders. The issue with shareholders for any company is they are very short sighted. They want to see growth and growth and growth and growth and growth because they want money. They don't care about anything else. They don't particularly. Some of these big shareholders do not care about the viability of Etsy in 10 years time because they want to put their money in they want to buy a share for a certain amount of money, have that go up in money, and then them sell and make a lot of money. That's the problem with big shareholders. So they're shouting and saying every quarter they want to see more, 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 and Etsy's under pressure for this. So it's having to expand and look at more ways to get more money. But that's a fine balancing line because... Basically, if you keep on pushing to rush to get more and more money, then you're putting yourself 
into a situation where you're wanting to directly compete with Amazon. And that is not what we want. Etsy had a unique selling point. Etsy was unique. But to grow Etsy, it's not necessarily always going to be mad growth. The pandemic thing was a weird thing. And there's going to be dips when the economy dips, you know, like just now. So Etsy's under pressure to move fast and to show extreme growth and they can't do that so the shareholders are a really big issue i don't know the solution for that well i do know the solution it's just not possible the solution is that all us crafters own all the shares in etsy that's not gonna happen i didn't even have enough money well i i have half a share in etsy go me um but us crafters can't afford to buy up all the shares so if there's any wonderful people out there with money they want to put for a long-term thing buy out all these quick buck investors who are coming in to break things quickly we don't want we, we don't want Etsy to be a massive Amazon we want Etsy to be the biggest handmade marketplace the biggest awesome place you go for handmade gifts and it's not just now. So that's one of the, the major things. Um, and another one is simply um, what people are buying. The, a big problem is all as handmade people are struggling to compete because the mass manufactured things, which you'll we'll cover in a minute, it drowns all of our stuff out and it drowns all of our stuff out not because of an evil algorithm but because buyers are buying that stuff and not our stuff so the algorithm says what is it the customers want to buy they want to buy this kind of stuff so it's showing them more of that kind of stuff we need buyers including ourselves etsy sellers should be buyers we need a community of people showing showcasing the great finds of real handmade stuff we need to know how to find the shops of real handmade stuff and that is a really difficult thing um and the all the other problems are kind of based on these two factors because etsy is all these new people coming in it's a cynical thing to say but they are making etsy money the algorithm is designed to make etsy money but there's a lot of scam shops coming in so etsy is scrambling to deal with these scam shops like a lot of the missteps that have happened have happened because Etsy's trying to deal with the bigger problem, but it's causing problems for all the people that Etsy wants on the platform. I hope that kind of makes sense. That was the rant I was having in my head over the morning coffee. I'm not sure it's very um, understandable, but yeah, let, let's go on. Completely littered with drop shippers and resellers and just art thieves. And most importantly- Art thieves is interesting we'll get into this in a minute etsy has made numerous promises about fixing these problems and so many more that we will get into yeah that's that is the problem that i just made etsy makes promises it's trying to stop the drop shippers and the scammers so it clearly has some kind of a system a bot that goes and looks for duplicated content and says hang on i see that on alibaba that must mean you're a drop shipper unfortunately some of the time alibaba has stole the images off of etsy rather than the other way around so that's a difficult thing but that but that system was put in place to stop the scammers it's just there's no additional system in place for people to be able to prove to be, for people to be able to go to Etsy and say, hey, Etsy, I think somebody's stolen my stuff. What can we do about it? They've stolen the stuff off of Etsy, even if it's really, really difficult to get your stuff taken down from a company that's in a completely different country. But at least Etsy could flag your stuff and say, this person's work is handmade. We have had the proof, so let's put it into the system so they don't get flagged and shut down. So let's talk about the origin story. According to Wikipedia, the name Etsy came from one of the original four creators of the platform. 
whose name was Robert. And he wanted a name that was completely nonsensical, something no one has ever heard before. And he heard Italian and was like, yeah, that's pretty much nonsense. I wish this was a gag for the video, guys. So while watching a movie that featured the Italian phrase SC, which translates to, oh yes, oh yeah, which yeah, now you know every time you say Etsy, you are essentially turning into the Kool-Aid man. Upon hearing the phrase Etsy, it turned into the word Etsy, which is where the name for the platform comes from. So That's an interesting thing. I've heard that a lot now. When I started on Etsy, and I can't find this this clip or this, this source anymore, but I read a thing since then that was basically saying the Etsy founders when it started when they were all being young and cool and all the rest of it they had a thing when every time they were asked where the name of Etsy came from and I say it Etsy we talked about that there you'll see the reason sort of in my description here I don't say it to be cute um I'm 50 year old that the cute bus flew about 25 years ago I don't say it to be cute it's just I started saying it before I'd heard anyone else saying it and it stuck but the founders used to have a thing where every time they were asked what Etsy meant they made up a completely different answer I don't know if this is the true answer but it seems to be the one that's stuck in recent years this is what they're saying the one that I'd heard when I first joined Etsy and I was looking into what the word meant and this made total sense to me they wanted it it was comp they were looking at Amazon and eBay at the time obviously and they wanted a similar sort of website but for handmade things and they thought oh yeah it's like eBay it's like Amazon etc <laughs> this sounds daft so they thought of the name as speaking out the letters in the abbreviation etc etc Etsy. So to me, that totally made sense that that's how you say it. So that's how I say it like that. So yeah, get, let me know in the comments, actually, if you heard any other origin stories. I've heard the, oh yeah, um, type origin story. Um, but yeah, let me know if you heard any of the others. I know there was lots out there. I just, that was the one that I heard first and I remembered it. And this is the one that people seem to be talking about now. It could be the true one. It could have been a thousand monkeys in a computer room typing until something popped up. Who knows? The company started by allowing handmade and handcrafted goods to be sold in what was essentially an online artisan market. In current day, the company claims to be all about vintage, handmade and crafty supplies according to their mission statement. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here. She does a very, very good review of sort of what Etsy is supposed to be, handmade vintage and supplies. So I'll direct you to her video rather than we both sit and watch and me nod along and go, yeah, I agree. Here's where it gets personal, okay? Sometimes with my videos, I like to separate me as honey aside from the problem, but this one is personal. So as you may not be able to tell, um, I love posters and all of my posters coincide with something I love. And for as long as the game has been out, I have been obsessed with Five Nights at Freddy's and with the movie coming out. Okay, I can sort of see where this is going. <sighs> And this is not her fault. This is not buyer's fault at all. But she is talking about somebody else's IP. So especially as there's a movie coming out, Five Nights at Freddy's is a game. It's a series of books. It's a whole universe. And it's very cool. However, if you're coming on to Etsy to buy Five Nights at Freddy, unless the sellers have permission to use Five Nights at Freddy things. Now, my friend Starla has a shop where she's doing book type merch and she has the permission of the authors to make stuff based on their books. Now, it's not the fault of the buyer, but people coming to Etsy to buy 
basically IP infringing things. They come to buy Five Nights at Freddy's things. They come to buy Taylor Swift things made by a handmade person. So fan art, things based on these things. It's illegal for these people to be selling. It's most likely illegal for these people to be selling them. So it's not the seller's fault, but at the same time, this is part of the problem because sellers are coming and going, oh, I'm really into this thing. I'm going to support a handmade artist. I want to go to Etsy to buy this thing from a real artist. But you're not, you're supporting people who are breaking the law. And as we said before, those kind of things are selling. So those kind of things get more popular. People go, look what I bought on Etsy. And other people go in to buy those kind of things. And people who are genuinely hand making things or people who genuinely have permission to make this kind of fan art are absolutely drowned out because the sellers are buying illegal things. So, sorry, the buyers are buying illegal things. So if there's money in that niche, there's going to be more sellers. I really, 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 really wanted a Five Nights at Freddy's poster for my wall. And one of my favorite things about my wall is all of it has been art that I have gotten either on Etsy, at conventions, or even just from my friends. So the first place I went to look was Etsy because, oh, it's a place where people sell their art, right? Wrong. You know what I found? <laughs> well, let me tell you what I didn't find, first of all. Posters. What I did find, however, were people selling PDF files that you would pay the money for, then you would have to print out the photo in the file, make it a poster yourself, and then you could put it on your wall. Yeah, this is a problem. <laughs> Digital files have an advantage on Etsy. The, the ruling, the, the ruling, <sighs> to rank on Etsy, having a good listing quality score helps you rank higher. And part of how what is judged as a good listing quality score is if you're seen for that keyword and people buy the item for that keyword and you relist, then Etsy will go, hey, people who are searching for that keyword like this type of item. So someone that sells digital is able to sell and relist hundreds of times without even doing a single thing. Whereas someone who is doing original one of a kind art, they can only sell it one time. So it's harder for them to rank on the algorithm in the places that people find them. Now, Etsy does give you options to be able to filter by digital, I, I think last time I looked. Um, so you would be able to, you can look at the shipping times as well. Don't look for, you know, immediate look for something that takes a few days to process or something. It is possible, but customers aren't to know this. But yeah, this is a problem with the algorithm that doesn't favor one of a kind items. It's not impossible to sell one of a kind items, but posters, patterns, cards, any sort of little thing. It's really, really difficult to be competitive with a physical item compared to a digital download. At that point, I could just take a clip from the game and go to Walmart, have it made as a poster and put it on my wall. And yeah, this really annoys me about a lot of things. Print on demand, digital downloads, everything else. There's so much, so much print on demand demand stuff on Etsy that customers, I, I want to tell you something. <laughs> you don't need to buy it on Etsy. You can make stuff right there on Canva and get it printed out. That's completely personalized to you. Do it yourself for, for a one-off t-shirt. Then you're cutting out the middleman who they might get a discount for the hefty sales they're doing. But in reality, they're having to mark up they're saying, oh, I'm going to charge you for my design time, which was probably buying files off a of Canva or Creative Fabrica and sticking them on a T-shirt. So they mark up for that and then they have to mark up for selling on Etsy and then they have to mark up for their time and mark up for their advertising. If you want a T-shirt and you know what you want and it's fairly basic, just make it yourself. He's saying to yourself, oh, well, honey, the reason you went on Etsy in the first place was to get original art. If you took a photo from the game, it wouldn't be original. Well, guess what? The photos in these files that they're selling 
come directly from Google. Yeah. So those are absolutely IP infringing. There is no denying <laughs> that. However, what you're looking for, unfortunately, is likely illegal. I don't know Five Night at Freddy IP, but I can see behind you, you have a ton of posters, anime posters. Um, I think they're from certain games and things. And if that's the same thing, if you've got original artists, the chances that these people have the permission to make and sell the fan art, because at the end of the day, that is also kind of robbing off of, I know it's kind of funny because I'm reacting to something that somebody's made. Her video is her own IP. Um, however, hopefully I'm adding <laughs> some kind of content to this and I'm not going to watch the whole thing. And I do tell you to go and see Electro Honey. She's a small creator. Absolutely looks like she's doing great. This is an awesome video. What she is looking for, and it's not her fault, what she is looking for is most likely illegal for the sellers to be making. Um, there are a few places. I wish Etsy would do this. Redbubble has areas where you can get license where you can sell certain things as fan art but it's you, you have to check that it's okay on etsy you're gonna have to do it yourself um and that is contact whoever created the thing because at the end of the day five nights at freddy's it's i think that's an independent game developer so if you're making fan art okay they're huge now but if you're making fan art you're stealing from this independent creator who created all of this. You're taking it and saying, oh, but if I draw it out and color it in, but you didn't imagine it. You didn't design the shapes and the characters all in the first place. You didn't do all the marketing to get it up there so that people are interested in it. You're just riding on the coattails of the success. Maybe what you see on Google is the Etsy listing. No, it is official art from the games. So after that, and after my rage of the only original artwork I saw being stolen, and you know, not even being able to get a poster in the first place, having to print out a PDF file and do it myself, which love a good DIY. But after all of that, I fell down a rabbit hole that led to a lot of really disturbing findings, guys. So I yeah, Etsy has its issues for sure. Let's see what she comes across. First, I thought maybe that was just one experience, right? Like, it can't all be that. No, it's not all bad, but it is really hard to find good things. I think most, yeah, most of the things I've bought on Etsy from the past few years are either shops that I already use for my supplies that I know about, or shops that I found in forums and Facebook and stuff, people that I've met and I've went and looked at their shop and said, wow, I want that. Um, so yeah, I've not bought anything from the Etsy search. Still is thriving for a reason. Wrong. So let's say you look up something totally random, you know, that is not an interest of mine. Let's say it's something like Genshin Impact, okay? Let's say it's something like Genshin Impact, okay? Well, you look up Genshin Impact and the first thing you see are my southern accent just came out, the first thing you see are these sticker packs that are clearly stickers with completely different art styles and also the exact same stickers you can find on Amazon for half the price of what they're being sold for on Etsy. And yeah, the drop shipping is a massive thing. In fact, there's two problems there. She's saying she's searched for certain things and the search is showing the wrong things. This is a sort of worrying trend. I'm hearing a lot of people say, as I say, I'm not using the Etsy search that much anymore, but people are saying it's sucking. And I have noticed search is getting worse because not just Etsy. I'm thinking on when I'm on Amazon, there was times for a while I was eating ketogenic and I would go on and I would type very specifically keto bread or something like that. I was looking for a certain thing. And you would assume, because that's not a fuzzy search term, that clearly says what I'm looking for. Or 
lots of other examples, but that's the one that pops into my head. So you search for keto bread and you're clicking on things and you don't, once you've clicked through a load, you don't necessarily read absolutely everything. So sometimes you could find yourself buying something and then be like, oh no, that's not actually keto. They threw up some other things that I might like. And it's not a massive deal just because I was choosing to restrict myself. But if I had a mad allergy to something and I typed very specifically like, no of this product because it's going to kill me. And on the front page, they were mixing in some things with this product that's going to kill you. That's a problem. And so unfortunately, Etsy is trying to be Amazon, but cooler, which is not going to happen. Amazon is going downhill fast and Etsy doesn't have to follow it in its plummet to that the word is in shitification, I believe, where Amazon started pretty good and it's getting terrible. Etsy just seems to be holding on to its coattails as it's dumping as it's heading down. And I don't hate AI, but there's a lot of things that AI is not very good at and sort of algorithms are run by AI and it seems that they're wanting to lean into them even more. And the problem with the AI is AI will just show you what the average person is likely to buy. And you and me, we ain't average. We don't want this bland. Bleh. I'm seeing it. I, I, I was lucky to see this video on YouTube quite often. I'm struggling. I used to be able to sit and put up the homepage and the recommendations on YouTube for me were really good. There was tons of interesting things. Now it's bland. It's like you've watched one video on this thing that answered all the questions you wanted and was really cool. Now here's 200 other videos on the exact same thing and nothing sort of any other way interesting. It becomes really bland and Etsy is as far as I can see, becoming that Amazon is that it's not giving you what you want. It's giving you what you think you want. Oh, that's kind of really scary. Actually, we've given the robots the power to give us what it thinks we want. So we've given robots the power to steer us in the directions we want. Oh, am I the only one who watched Terminator and is worried? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, th that, that was where my rant is. So I think we'll leave it at that point in the rant and I'll just carry on ranting a little bit just now. So the two main problems I really see with Etsy is shareholders and the influx of things that shouldn't be sold on Etsy, <laughs> basically. We need a way to push forwards the good. The problem is there's so many people like Electro Honey, love it, but she's pulling up and going, there are all these terrible things happening on Etsy. It, this is absolutely aw awful. It's hurting the sellers. Let's boycott Etsy and let's go somewhere else. As shit as Etsy is right now, it's the only option we have. As actual artists, it's the only viable solution unless we are good enough to run our own websites, unless we have our own social media following and things. It's horrible, but it's the best we've got and it could be better. But part of the reason why it's horrible is because what people are coming to Etsy to buy, no offense to you, but you know, people are saying, they're coming to buy IP infringing things. They're coming, they're buying things without doing a bit of due di diligence. Now you shouldn't have to, Etsy should be doing that. But if you see a pair of earrings or something that don't really look all that handmade, look into the listing, look, is the listing videos? What about the shop? Learn about the seller. Can you see their two hands making the item? Um, right click, reverse Google search, have a look and see if it's on Alibaba. Um, if it is like, give it a break. If you're sure that this is the person actually making it, if their entire shop is pottery, you see videos of them making the actual thing that they're making. They hold it up. They talk about it in their about section. If you're sure it's them, then go ahead. If you're not sure it's them and you're seeing it on Alibaba for a cheaper price, 
you might be wanting to just buy it on Alibaba. So us buyers have to be held responsible. And things like if you are wanting fan merch, if you're wanting merch from a movie that's coming out, from a book, from a Taylor Swift tour or something, support the creator, not the ripoff artist. It's absolutely fine if if I am in love with Five Nights and Freddy's or you know, any of the things that I've made here, it's absolutely fine for me to sit down and sketch them or to make a make a needle felted sculpture of them. It's not fine for me to sell them. Even Baby Yoda, Star Wars has plenty of money, but they, they have artists who created Baby Yoda. They went to all the trouble of promoting it and making the movies and everything. If we start supporting the rip-off artists, which I would be if I tried to sell that, if we start supporting that, then we're taking money away from the place that created the thing that we loved. It's that simple. Etsy needs a way to be able to show that a creator is licensed to sell the stuff that they're selling. That would be really cool. Like the license holder, you know, could say, right, here's where you put in your details that the license holders agreed that you can you can sell this kind of thing. That would be super cool. Um, yes, Etsy needs to get on top of the drop shipped stuff and the low effort stuff. To be perfectly honest, I think, let me know what you think here, but I think it would possibly be even good if Etsy could throttle the number of listings that a new shop could generate, because this is one of the scams that's out there just now, the get rich quick videos. They're like, how to list a hundred listings in a day, per day on Etsy. No. Nobody is making any quality stuff if they're listing a hundred listings a day on Etsy. So maybe if that could be throttled as well. So people aren't coming in and flooding the <sighs> flooding the search, pushing out as sellers. It's harder and harder to get seen in search. Um and also, yes, make it easier. Perhaps people have to physically click, click if they want digital downloads because that's a different thing. I, I agree. If someone searches for poster, the likelihood is they really wanted a physical poster. There could, yes, the digital downloads might be selling. Some people will be looking for that. Many people are probably download or buying it and then downloading it. Or, you know, saying to the seller they're not happy with it and the seller's like, not my fault, should have read the description. Because customer support is sucking. These non-artists suck. They uh, Not all of them. Some of the artists suck as well. A lot of sellers on Etsy are to have terrible customer support. And yeah, this could be the thing that they're selling tons of these things, but they have tons of unhappy customers, but just they're like, oh, it was only a few bucks. I won't bother making a fuss. So it's good enough. It's the end shitification. It's good enough. What's on the front page is good enough. It's not great. <sighs> oh, I think that's enough of the rant, but go out and track Electro Honey. There's a whole lot else. We only did five minutes of our video in 35 minutes apologies <laughs> go out and check her video some awesome stuff there from a small creator support her um yeah let me know what you think in the comments i don't know why i woke up and felt ranty